time, at the time of difficulty, I can use those. I am resorting to my own wealth. You see, the powerful tells you I am an official. I am in the government. I am not afraid of anything. My cousin is the prime minister, for example. Therefore, I don't care. Or I have a big tribe. I resort to my tribe. But imagine someone who doesn't have money, doesn't have power, doesn't have a tri tribe, and he's by himself alone. To whom he expresses himself? To whom he tells his anguish and difficulty? To someone else who is as weak as him? Remember when I told you the story of Ibrahim السلام, when they were launching him to the fire? And Jibreel came and told him, do you need anything? He said, from you? No, I don't need anything. Because you are just weak as I am. So we need someone who's strong enough that we tell him what we need. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعْمٌ This is prayers. In fact, why is it called the prayers? Salat in Arabic means the dua that we make. That's the true meaning of salat. Then it has been used for the prayers that we do. So in fact, salat is a dua is an asking, humble asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says, in the time of difficulty, when you have something that no one can solve it for you, you know what to do? Just go make a wudu and do two rak'ah, pray two rak'ah, and then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to solve that problem for you. He says, ما يمنع أحدكم إذا دخل عليه غم من غموم الدنيا أن يتوضأ ثم يدخل مسجده فيركع ركعتين فيها ويدعو الله فيهما. What's the point? If you are in difficulty, in in hardship, you don't know to, what to do. There is no friend listening to you, no family member giving care about you. You know, there is one person that you can resort to. Go back to, to Turaqa and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to solve the problem for you. This is number one. The second one is confession. You know that in Catholicism, in Christianity, the division of Catholicism, they have something called confession. Do you know that? That if I am a Catholic and I commit a sin, I need my sin to be forgiven. To whom I go? I go to the priest. Before Sunday, I go to the priest and I tell my mistake. I tell my sin. What kind of sin I have committed. So the confession is there to relieve you. Why is it so? Sometimes we incur such a bad sin, such a negative mistake, that our conscience cannot take it anymore. Has it ever happened to you? That you feel, you feel such a strong sense of guilt, that you cannot pardon yourself, cannot forget, forgive yourself? To whom do you go? Do you disclose your sin to your relatives? To your friends? To your parents, for example? No. Sometimes if you express it to your Parents, they will abandon you. The relatives will abandon you. But you have one person to go back again. To ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. How many times per day we make a mistake? Many times. Now if they say we just leave it and leave it and leave it. After three months, five months, can you go back and ask Allah? The problem, you see, let's say that you get into conflict with someone. And then you insult him somehow. Now, if you leave the situation like this, after days and months and years, can you go back and tell him I'm sorry? It gets very difficult. But if you make the mistake right away, and right away go back and tell him I am sorry, you have relieved yourself. That's the effect of the prayers. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi sallu alayhi wa ala aswatikum. Allahumma. 
Somebody asked him, what is the benefit of the prayers? He said, it washes the sin. It is like you take a shower five days a, a, five times a day. Do you ever get to see dirt on your shirt, on your body? The same thing does the prayer. When we commit a sin, an un unforgiven sin, then we go and wash ourselves with the prayers. The second benefit of the prayers, the brothers and sisters, that is, it, it tells us that there is an observing person watching us. Insan is a very weak creature. But once it becomes strong, it becomes ignorant. It forgets that he used to be the weak person. Therefore, he becomes arrogant. He becomes egocentric. He only thinks that by his skills and his intelligence, he became so powerful. But forgetting that he used to be such a weak person. Therefore, you see that he causes trouble for himself and for others. He forgets that there is someone watching him. He becomes oblivious that somebody is watching him and observing him. You see, in San, humankind is the only cre creature that has declared himself a Lord. Have you ever seen any, any other creature declare himself to be God? Even the Shaytan himself never assumed that he, he, he is a Lord or he is God. Only in San has said that I am the Lord. Pharaoh used to call himself God. Why? Due to ignorance. Due to weakness, he forgets. He forgets that he was nothing, but then he asked Allah, how you would resurrect me again? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answering him, in the same way that you were nothing, and we created you out of nothing. You forgot yourself? The problem with insan, with a human that tends to forget, Therefore, the prayer keeps him in check. Keeps him in line that there is someone is observing you. You can't run away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a constant surveillance on you. Be careful. There is a hadith from one of the imams. says, اتقوا معاصي الخلوات فإن الشاهد هو الحاكم. Be careful from the sins that you own, that you are alone and you commit. Why? You think there is no one is watching you. But the same witness that is witnessing right now, tomorrow will be the judge himself. In this life, let's say you break a law, and then they take you to the court, you can always argue with the judge. You tell him, no, your honor, I never did such a thing. I wasn't, you know, I didn't mean it intentionally. intentionally. I didn't do it. You argue. But what do you do on the day of judgment? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He becomes the judge. Therefore, this prayer that we do, it keeps the line busy between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That there is someone is watching us all the time. Now let's go back to the ayah. The ayah says, حَافِظُوا عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ وَالصَّلَاةُ الْوَسْطَى Be guardians of your prayers and especially the midmost one, the middle one. What is the middle one? Here the narrators have gave different explanations. The majority of the scholars, and many of them are the Sunni Muslim scholars, they say that the middle prayer is Salatul Asr. The Asr prayer is considered to be the middle one. Why? Because we have five daily prayers. The one in the middle is Asr. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing to us, telling us, be guardian of your prayers, in addition, especially to the middle prayers, which is Asr prayers. Other scholars say, no, it is not the Asr prayers. It is the Fajr prayers, the Dawn prayers. Why? Because it is in the middle between day and night. We have day. Start from sunrise until sunset.